in the believer. All right, all right, all right. One thing I know, she was talking about going to church all the time. I remember going from church to prayer <laughs> and thinking to myself, now we were praying while we was in church. <laughs> Grandma, why do we have to come from church and have prayer? All right. But I look and I seen how close our family used to be when we used to pray together. See, uh -huh. see somebody don't know what I'm talking about. There's some power when you can get together as a family. And not because there's some barbecue in the kitchen. Not because somebody has died, but just simply because we want to pray for one another. And see, Grandma had that wisdom to know that if you're going to get through some of these hard times, you're going to need your family. You see, God didn't put no man to be an island. Nobody is an island to themselves. We all need somebody. Yeah. I might be strong enough to hold you today, but you might have to hold me tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. And so the word God has given me, if not on my, y'all mind if I preach to me. Yeah. The sermon that God gave me uh -huh. is going to be kind of selfish today. All right. In order for it to work for you, uh, yeah. you've got to be selfish today. Right. See, that's time that God wants you to do for others, but that's time that God wants you to minister to yourself, yeah. right. to examine yourself, yeah. to see what you got going on in the inside. See, that's some stuff affecting your relationship with God, and it's because you have yet to check what's going on in you. There's some problems in your relationship because you have yet to check what is going on in you. All right. There's some things happening in your family as a result of you. And if you work on you, you will see things get better. Y'all got your Bibles? Now don't make me have y'all raise them at all. If you have your Bible, stand up and turn to Matthew the seventh chapter. God just has confirmation when she did a witness report on the seventh chapter. I said, ain't God good? And she don't even know God's confirmation. She was talking about something in that witness report. And I don't know if you see my wife point to the sky, but it was confirmation what God had for me to give you today. But we're going to start from one to five. We're going to start at one through five. And my version is going to be the new international version. Makes it a little more plain, so it might read a little different if you got the King James version. But when you have it, say amen. Amen. Follow along with me. Now, this is personal. Now, this ain't that you're going to look at your neighbor for. It says, do not judge. Or you, too, will be judged. But in the same way you judge other people, other folks, other Christians, other folks in your family, other folks on your job, other folks who don't look like you. It says that you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye? When all the time there is a plank in your own eye. It says, you hypocrite, first take the plank out of your own eye. Then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. You may be seen. This evening, I want to talk to you about, Lord, work on me. Lord, work on me. I wonder how many of y'all who are old enough to buy a car and got the credit and the money and the resources to pay somebody back. Would ever go buy a car and not test drive it? 
and not look under the hood and just take the word of the person that's selling it to you that it's all right. How many would just give them money and trust what they say? The first price they give you, you say, I ain't going to negotiate. I ain't going to test it because I know it's a new car. I'm just going to jump in and I'm just going to drive off the lot. Right. How many people shop like that? Especially if it's a used car. <laughs> Ooh, if it's a used car, you done found somebody on Craigslist, or you done seen it on the side of the road. You take a mechanic with you, you, you check the oil, you check the transmission, you drive it on the block, you ask him to drive it on the freeway. You, you do all these tests to see if everything in the car is all right. And I thought about it. God put it in my spirit. He said, you know, I am the ultimate mechanic. I'm the specialist that don't need no specialist. Right. And he said, every now and then, you ought to look under your hood, Reverend Davis. And you ought to check your oil. And you ought to check your transmission fluid. And you ought to check what's going on in your automobile of life. And you need to see what you need to be worked on. So selfishly, I said, Lord, what are you talking about? How can you compare me to a car? I can't be compared to no car. What are you talking about, God? I, I, I wrestled with this. What are you talking about, God? How can I, a human being, be compared to an automobile? God said, just like an automobile, you tend to break down every now and then. And you need to be fixed. Just like an automobile, you have wear and tear that goes on. Just like an automobile, you got to keep up in maintenance with yourself to make sure you don't go crazy, to make sure you don't go in the top. Just like an automobile, when there's something wrong with you, you got to take it back to the maker sometime. Sometimes when, when, when you don't know what's wrong with the car, you take it back to the place you bought it from. You take it back to the place that created it and say, I don't know what's wrong with this car. Now they got technology. They can put it on the computer. And they can tell you what's wrong with it. When I thought about that, I said, God, if we like automobiles, some of us ain't gonna pass emissions. Some of us got some issues. And if we like automobiles, God, if some of us are not gonna be able to drive in this road of life because we got too much going on in our mind and we got too much issues going on in our heart and we, we, we like to say it a little bit too much, God. And, and if we got to go, Father, and drive and work for you, uh, some of us not gonna pass. He missed it. Why? Because we have failed to raise up the hood, to see what's going on under there, to test out what's going on. The Bible said, let a man examine himself. Let a man, let a woman, let a man look in the mirror. You don't want to look in the mirror and see other folks' issues. You ought to look in the mirror and see what's wrong with you. So if you don't mind, I, I looked in the mirror. And I said, God, I need you to work on me. Yes. I said, God, work on me before I can work on others. Yes. Before I can be the preacher you need me to yes. be. Yes. Before I can be the man of God you call me to be. Yes. Yes. Before I can slay the giants in my life. Yes. Before I can be more than a conqueror. Lord, I need you to work on me just like you would work on an automobile. So God said, just pull on to my shop. He said, pull on to my shopping and do some self-examinations. And, 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 and he said, look at your life and look what's going on in your life. And you just tell me what you find. And, and I had to look at the word of God and, and I had to pull up into God's shopping. And I found out when I pulled up, I needed an alignment. Because there were some times that I got driven off to the left. And I said, Lord, I want to be able to stay straight, Lord. I, I don't want to be poor to the left. I need you to work on me because I need an alignment, Lord. Help me to stay straight on your path. The devil try to distract me with money. Help me to stay on your path. The devil try to distract me with the haters and the liars. Help me to stay on your path. When I run into fake and phony people, help me to love them anyway. Help me to love the unlovable. Help me to give my money when my money's funny. Help me to be obedient to your word. Lord, 
when I'm walking into the shop, the first thing I recognize is that I need an alignment. Tell somebody, I need an alignment.
friends. Way back when they said family members, I know. That's what folks you know. That ain't, that ain't quite moved nowhere. They got nothing on my second man. They got supposed to come to church Sunday after Sunday. And they ain't got no closer to God. They just still as scary. They still scared to wake up. They still scared to testify. They still scared to give out. Uh-huh. And when you lose some trade, uh-huh. you 
start to lose traction. All right, all right. And somebody know what I'm talking about. Right, yeah, yeah. When you ain't got traction, you can just hide in and everywhere. When you ain't got the traction that you need, it's hard to pick up speed. It's hard to go up inside those mountains. See, sometimes my faith gets weakened, my patience gets lower, and sometimes I, I, I got to say, God, will you help me? Like I need some air. Yeah. My tires get low, and there's some stuff that I'm going to run across that might make me blow out. I might have a flat, Lord. I don't want to depend on a spare tire. I don't want to depend on a donut, Lord. I want you to work on me, Lord, so I can keep on rolling through life. When things don't get my way, I want to keep on rolling. When folks don't look at me, and they want to know, why is you still sane? That's because I'm still rolling. You know how I made it up the mountain. I'm still rolling. I used to have. 